This is Mark Schofield from Inside the Pylon with the latest installment of First Sound, a series where I or another writer at Inside the Pylon break down a player more of a particular draft prospect. For me, I'm usually looking at quarterbacks, and during these I bring you inside my thoughts as the player plays unfold. Today I'm looking at California quarterback Davis Webb and decision making. Webb is one of the players I'm very interested in seeing down in Mobile during the Senior Bowl. Now before we get to Webb, I want to talk for a few seconds just about decision making at the quarterback position. I've long held the belief that it doesn't happen in a vacuum. There are so many different things that go into a particular play. Starting that week in practice, when you get those plays installed, um, first in film sessions and meetings with the coaches and then on the field, on the practice field. And then as they unfold throughout the game, you might put in a particular play to attack what you expect to see from a defense on Saturday afternoon or Sunday afternoon. And then they give you a different look on the field. So everything that you've worked that week on during practice, throwing a post route or looking to the corner route on a particular play, now gets adjusted. And so everything has to be given a little bit of context when you're looking at decision-making at the quarterback position. And it's not one of those traits that sort of jumps off the tape at you. You know, you can look at arm talent. You can look at athletic ability, play speed, things like that. You can easily tell from the tape. Decision-making is tougher. And as evaluators on the outside, we never have the complete picture. We don't know their exact play calls or progression reads or what they were told in the huddle on the sideline before that next drive, how to attack the defense on a given play or plays. But you got to try because it's an important thing. I mean, look at the national championship game that just happened between Clemson and Alabama. Clemson ran 99 offensive plays against Alabama. And on 77 of those, quarterback Deshaun Watson had to make some sort of decision, whether to pitch it or keep it himself, or a passing play where he had to decide where to throw the football. And the course of those decisions and what Watson did during that game ultimately told the story. So decision-making is a critical component of the quarterback position, so we got to take a look at it the best we can. And the way I typically try to do it is, you know, going through a play and going through playbooks and trying to figure out exactly what the quarterback at least I think was supposed to be doing and going from there. So we can turn to Webb, who's a very intriguing prospect in this draft class. He's sort of in that, you know, middle tier of quarterbacks that people are looking at. Um, big arm, um, might throw the best nine route in this entire class. I mean, when you're going through your work on Webb, um, that would definitely jump out at you when you see him throw that nine route. Throws a really good accuracy, has a big arm, um, pretty, uh, you know, ideal size for the position, listed at 6'5", 230. Uh, had a good career at Texas Tech. Uh, was a two-year starter. Started some games as a freshman and then as a sophomore. But when Pat Mahomes came along, um, Webb decided it was time to find one last place to play. So he came to Cal as a graduate transfer. Uh, started all their games this year. Um, we're going to look at four plays from Webb's season this year. First with a play uh, against Utah. And then three plays against Washington State. Now this first play is that play um, against Utah. As you can see, I've got the play art drawn up. Um, Utah shows a little you know, single high here. Pre-snap. Um, they bring that. They got the one single high safety here. The other safety is down here. But they're going to rotate it back to a cover four look with that safety down here. Rotate him back. So this is a pretty good job of rotating the coverage that we see here from Utah. So that's going to factor into the decision making that we see from the quarterback here. Now, we're going to get half-field reads. We get sort of this, it's a mini under-concept here, or, you know, in-concept that we see here. Teams call it different things. The Patriots call something like this. We'll see actually a little bit later, under-concept. You get in-route here from the outside receiver and then a corner route over the top. Webb will have that to the backside. And then it gets a sail, a tri-level flood concept here. We get the vertical route to clear it out. That's going to occupy the corner. And then we get the deeper out route from the tight end and the back release into the flat. So that's kind of the context of this play. It comes, you know, early in the second quarter at a 14-3 game with California having the lead, ball near midfield, football on the right hash mark. So it's kind of a good grasp of, you know, the decision making from the quarterback here. We see the coverage, we see the play. Webb's going to look to the right side of the field from the jump um, and he's going to make his decision. As we go through this, what I see is some indecisiveness. Webb is a very, very, right now, at least on the tape that I've done, you can draw your own conclusions when you go through his tape. He's very much a see-it, throw-it type of guy. He needs to be sure before he lets the ball fly. 
Maybe part of that is adjusting to a bit of a new offense. You know, Cal and Texas Tech run air raid based systems, but you know things are different from system to system. Reads are you know slightly different, so there's an adjustment there. So part of the indecisiveness that we see at least on this play might be due to that. I don't know for sure, but as we run through it, I'll at least share with you my thoughts on it. You see the ball is snapped. He comes right to the right side of the field. He does do a good job here. You can see him. He sees the rotating coverage, so he knows you know that they're now dropping this back to a cover four look. I like that. Now he sets up here, and he's looking to the right side of the field here. He's verified the coverage. He knows that with cover four, this is going to be taken away. Corner's going to take away that vertical route, which is fine. He's got two guys to choose from here, and you've got two zone defenders in the area. You see linebacker here and the other linebacker here. Basically, both of these guys are open. Both of these routes are open. The tight end's open here in the flat. I mean, excuse me, in the intermediate where you get the running back in the flat. Both these guys are open. Webb just needs to pull the trigger on one of them. You know, and in a second and 10, maybe you throw the flat route, but, you know, the tight end's open. And you're going to read this thing high to low, so he's going to look at the tight end first, and he just triple clutches it. Again, makes the result is good, but it's the process and get in there that you see some hesitancy before he finally makes this throw. I mean, running through it at full speed. I mean, there's about three clutches before he finally convinces himself that it's okay to let this fly. And, you know, that works here. The result is nice, but is that process going to work at the next level? You know, this linebacker, you know, from Utah, he's a good player. You're going to see a better linebacker when you're playing on Sundays. You know, this linebacker here, good player. You're going to see a faster guy when you're playing on Sundays. That window that Webb has to throw the football, that's going to close in a hurry when he starts playing in the NFL, especially when you pause for a couple of clutches here. By this time, linebacker's going to be under this. This linebacker might see that and jump under it. I mean, that throw window is going to be a lot tougher come Sunday afternoons. So there's some hesitancy there from Webb that I see on that play that gives me a little bit of pause myself going through his tape. So it's something to note, and it's not just this, that first play. You see it on a number of throws. So you go through his tape some more, and you start to look at some other games, and is it there or is it not there? These are now three plays from their game against Washington State. Washington State wins this game in a blowout. But it's a good study because you get to see guys in different settings, different environments, how they react to different scenarios. You want to see a guy when he, you know, playing against good competition. You want to see a guy when they're playing against lower level competition to see if they still elevate their game. You want to see how a guy responds in the fourth quarter of a blowout. Is he still out there making his reads and going through things the right way, or is he just kind of going through the motions? Webb competes to the end of this game, and I give him full credit for that. And some of the thought process and decisions that we see in this game, you know, make me feel a little bit better about his potential transition. And we can start with this play. It's a mesh concept. If you've read my work at ITP, if you've seen some of these videos, you know I love the mesh concept. I talk about it a ton. I highly recommend the presentation that Coach Mike Leach from, Mike Leach from Washington State gave on the mesh concept at a Nike coaching clinic two years ago. You can find that book online, nikecoy.net, I think is the website. You can Google it. It's well worth it. He just gives an entire presentation on coaching up the mesh concept. It was, And that's something you see, you know, Friday nights, Saturday afternoons, you see it Sunday. I mean, the Miami Dolphins run a ton of mesh concept this year. So it's good to learn that if you're going to be evaluating guys, especially guys from air raid schemes. This is sort of a standard mesh. We've got double slots here. We get the mesh concept from the inside guys. We get the vertical route backside. Outside receiver runs the dig. Wheel route from the running back. And you know I love the wheel route. Now, looking at Washington State defensively, they show web pre-snap cover four. But they actually, what was really interesting going through this, they go to a man scheme here. They basically play man across the board. And even the safeties, they kind of man up on these guys. And you'll see them during the play almost cross the field with the guys on the mesh. So it's basically mesh. It's basically man across the board. And... This is an interesting thing to evaluate on this play because when you, you know, mesh concepts a man beater. I mean, you're looking to get those linebackers crossed up. But when Webb looks at this pre snap, 
he sees cover four, so he's probably thinking zone. And what you're going to do on zone is you're going to pretty much come off the mesh early because those linebackers are going to do a good job switching that up. And then you're looking dig to wheel. Maybe you get that cornerback on, you know, in a zone scheme to rotate a bit towards the dig. You can find that wheel route on the outside or safeties drop, you hit that dig route. And that's pretty much what Webb does. He comes off the mesh quickly. He's looking at it, but he sees what looks like zone. I mean, look at the defenders here. It still looks like zone, and it'll become man. It'll be more apparent as you go through this. Gets a little bit of pressure at his feet. You can see, look at the safeties. These guys are rotating. Linebackers rotating over towards the wheel. This is that corner. He's still on that route. These guys are starting to switch it up underneath. So he throws the dig. You know, and I like the decision making in the throw process there. It's, you know, it's, you might question it a little bit because, you know, if he's, if he still gets up, gets man coverage on this, why doesn't he come to the mesh? Well, he gets some pressure at his feet. So he has to make a bit of a quick throw. See the man there. He could have waited another beat for that mesh, but at this point, he's come off of that because he's getting what he wants. He's getting that dig route behind the linebackers in front of the safeties, which is what you'd expect to sort of see against zone, even though, again, it's a man-based scheme. Puts it in there. So I like the thought process there. It's, you know, a, almost a circular way to get to a good result, but I, in, you know, in contrast to the previous play, I kind of like the thought process there. I think he reads it well, even though on mesh and man coverage, you expect to come to that mesh based on the look and what he sees and how he reacts to it, I think he makes a pretty good decision here. So let's come to a play a little bit later in the game. This is a play early in the second quarter. It's a second and goal situation. We've got three receivers to the left. Here we see, it again, that double in concept, which you might hear it termed in air raid schemes. Patriots used to call this and probably still do an under concept. You get two in routes from the outside receivers and that corner route over the top. Nice design against man or zone, particularly against cover two, as we're going to see here in the red zone. You get, you know, two, two man. These guys will be covering those slant routes, and then you get that corner route running away from that half field safety. Um, if it's straight cover two, where this guy's going to drop a bit, you might find a window to throw that outside slant. Or if he sinks a little bit, then again, you get that corner route. You still have that in break and slant as well, and that's what he's going to throw here. Actually going to get a little bit of a blitz. From this guy so he makes a really good decision here shows a little bit of patience lets that blitzer vacate this area and then throws this inside slant safety has to stay on that corner route so this opens up nicely and red zone decision making it's tougher for any quarterback because field is constricted bodies are flying around the throwing lanes are much much more narrow so any sort of good decision in the red zone is something that I make a note of because if things get tougher down there, so got to give some credit to Webb here. See the blitz coming. Webb peeks at this backside vertical off, off the snap, knows he can't get anything there, so he quickly comes to this side of the field. And now look what he's got. He's got the corner with his back to him, so he knows corner's running with that. I mean that safety, excuse me, with his back to him, so he knows the safety's running with that corner route. He's got that blitzer right here, middle of the field, wide open for this guy coming in on the slant. Now let's look at that again because there's something I want to point out that I think all of you should make note of when you study web. Watch his hands in the pocket. Right there, burps the baby. Webb does this a lot. That extra pad of the football with the left hand right before the throw. It's something to make note of. He does it more often than not. It's okay for him right now. It's going to be an issue going forward facing faster defenses with tighter throwing windows. That extra half beat, one, it's a tell. Guys are going to be able to read that and know when the ball is coming out. Two, that extra half second is the difference between a completion and an interception in the NFL. Sometimes it's that close. And so the extra time that Webb takes to make this throw is fine here. But he's going to need to clean that up going forward. Finally, this last play from the Washington State game. It's another red zone play. 
And what I really like this about this, and if you're a defensive coordinator or an offensive coordinator out there watching this, this is some good play calling, some, a way to set up a different play from an offense. So something to be wary of if you're a DC, if you're an offensive coordinator, something maybe to keep in the back of your mind for your next season. They show the double in again, something they show the defense on that previous play. We've got corner route coming here. You've got this inside route, and this guy starts inside. But then they just rotate it basically into a flat seven smash where this guy runs a pivot route breaking this way. And what you're hoping for for an offense is maybe you get this corner thinking it's double in to commit to it a little bit, overplay that slant just enough, you get that pivot route breaking back to the outside, you might free up some space along the sideline for a nice easy throw. So that's why I kind of like these two plays together. And again, we get a glimpse of the decision making here in the red zone. Webb's going to look to this. Again, he sees the too high safety look, so he's going to know it's basically smash, throw the corner. What's that corner do? If he drops, throw the pivot route underneath it. It's second and seven. Take what they give you. If this safety here squats on the pivot, throw the corner. That's what we mean about throwing the corner on smash concept. Read that corner and throw off of his decision. So what does that corner do? He drops. Webb reads this. He's looking left all the way. Again, you're not going to really try to force a throw in. Look at how this safety is squatted on that corner out. Again, defense has seen it. They know what to expect. Def that safety is really overplaying that corner. So that corner route is not going to be there. And again, you get the, this cornerback bailing a little bit. They're giving you this throw. So take it. And that's what Webb does. Again, burps the baby for making the throw. Now, Defender makes a good recovery, but it's still a good read from the quarterback, particularly in the red zone. I mean, this is exactly what you want to see. Receiver slips a bit coming out of it, but still, I mean, it sets you up with third and short, which, you know, most offenses will take nine times out of ten. Again, it's that, that little pat, though. Something to be wary of going for it. So those are some plays from Davis Webb, some areas where I think he showed some good decision-making and some good thought process. And then that first play where I start to question the decision-making a little bit, a little indecisive, needs to see it to throw it. So those are some of my initial thoughts on Webb. I think he's an intriguing prospect, particularly in that mid-round range. But we'll keep going through the tape, as I'm sure you will as well, and make our own determinations on him going forward. For Inside the Pylon, this is Mark Schofield thanking you for watching this edition of First Sound. Keep checking InsideThePylon.com throughout the draft season as well as our YouTube channel, YouTube.com backslash InsideThePylon for more thoughts from all of our writers from Inside the Pylon.